everybody. I'm Laura Trump coming to you from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. It's a party in disarray, and it's no wonder because deception and disregard for the Constitution will get you nowhere with shrewd American voters. Joining me is an attorney and the Republican National Committee woman for California, Harmie Dillon. Harmie, welcome in to Happy Studio to be here. 45. Thank you. So we see that the, the Democrats are basically desperate at this point. They've put this president through so much. Finally, impeachment is over. So the country is getting slightly back on focus now. And we're, we're really able to see that the Democrats have done nothing for the country in the past three years. The president has done quite a bit and has a great plan forward. Uh, how do you think voters are going to respond to this as we're in an election year? Well, it's interesting because Democrats are continuing to talk about impeachment. Uh, Eric Swalwell from my state is saying the president could be impeached again. Oh, my gosh. And uh, the whole situation with uh, Roger Stone and other issues right. like that are, are causing them that they haven't given up on impeachment. So meanwhile, they have not been able to accomplish any of their agenda. Their far left agenda, Green New Deal, open borders, uh, health care for all. <laughs> so in a way, it's a blessing that they've been tied up with this fruitless effort. Yeah. But I think when you go to the voters and try to convince them not to reelect an incumbent who has created 7 million new jobs and a, a booming economy in every sector and no end in sight and making our country safer, they really have nothing to sell. And yeah. they're dark painting of a very negative picture of America is not what the voters are seeing. So I think it's going to be really tough for them. Yeah, I think it is going to be tough for them. Um, we saw they had a, such an, a, a disaster really on their hands in Iowa. They yes. couldn't even get the votes counted. We still, I don't even know if we got 100% of the votes in, but no. I know that we, we finally had a, an outcome there. Uh, they seem to be stumbling every which way they turn. Obviously, impeachment didn't work out for them. Um, the president, as you know, likes to uh, talk a little bit about yes. them. He had some things to say at a recent rally in New Hampshire. Yes. Take a look. The radical left's pathetic partisan crusade has completely failed and utterly backfired with 18 votes. Think of that, 18 votes to spare, with a lot of votes to spare. And also, very importantly, as of today, I, we, because it's we, it's not I, it's we, it's all, we're all in this together. We have the highest poll numbers that we have ever had. Thank you, Nancy, very much. Thank you. It is about we. It's never been about Donald Trump right. because we know, Hermit, that his life would probably be a lot easier sure. had he never decided to take this job. Listen, every coup attempt has failed. They mm -hmm. first tried to say that we colluded with Russia to win in 2016. Two years and $30 million of taxpayer money later, finally, the Mueller report came out. We saw that wasn't true. Right. They tried to say that there was some problem with a phone call with Ukraine. The president was incredibly transparent, released the transcripts on it. They went forward with impeachment. He was acquitted by the right. Senate. Uh, they've, they've really done, I think, everything wrong every step of the way. As you just said, they're probably not going to stop. But I actually think it makes people out there want to vote for Donald Trump even more. How do you think voters are reacting to what they've seen come out of the left? And, and as we're headed towards November, what strategy do the Democrats have? Well, to your first question, I think that a lot of voters are reacting very negatively to what's looking like an unfair witch hunt against the president. Yeah. People put themselves in his shoes and they know what's unfair to be treated that way. We're seeing a record number of independents and even Democrats showing up to the rallies, which is really, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's really encouraging. And, and that's really important because Ronald Reagan won with that bipartisan support. And uh, the president is really, uh, you know, out performed recent Republican candidates by doing that. And I think he's growing. Uh, we are seeing some some interesting folks left on the table because, Harmi, leading up to this, the media and all the polls said that it was going to be Joe Biden. Aren't you scared that for the president to run against Joe Biden? Joe Biden has uh, came in fifth place in New Hampshire, yeah. fourth yeah. place in Iowa. I mean, by all accounts, he's out of this thing. Uh, we all thought that he was in South Carolina. You yeah. just came in on a train, yeah, Harmeet. that's right. Tell me who you saw on the train. Right, so I was coming this morning from D.C. up here, and Joe Biden was in my Amtrak car with me. <laughs> Joe Biden I, was I on the train. A, I had to do a double take, and it was him. <laughs> and, you know, so, you know, God bless, but he's not in South Carolina, and he's not in Nevada. He's not in the next two states that are going to vote. So that's a pretty bad sign for a candidate who's trying to lead his country yeah. going forward. He's really uh, seems to have given up, frankly. Yeah. And I want to talk about Mike Bloomberg for a second, because, you know, the the Democrats 
they're the woke party. They're the virtue signaling um, party that, that likes to say that they should have a minority or a woman as their candidate. Yet, who do we see as their, their top tier person? We see Bernie Sanders, mm-hmm. an, an old white guy, mm-hmm. and now possibly Mike Bloomberg, who is an old, very, very rich white guy yes. himself, yes. who is essentially skipping the whole process mm-hmm. that normally one would have to go through to become the nominee for, uh, for president. He's going to buy his way, he thinks, into this nomination. Does this work out for him? I don't see how this works. Um, I I know that the sort of true believer Democrats who are Bernie supporters are very bitter and upset about how he was treated in 2016 to the extent that some of them voted for Donald Trump rather than vote for who they perceive to be a phony establishment candidate, Hillary Clinton. Well, um, Mike Bloomberg is, you know, Hillary Clinton with none of the experience or even semi charm. Uh, and so, <laughs> so I think it's, a, and, you know, Bernie supporters and Bernie are, are calling him an oligarch. And so I do not see him being able to buy his way in. Uh, it will be interesting to see what happens as we go forward. We could look at a contested convention on the Democrat side. Right now you got Bernie Sanders, who I think w- they may be trying to play with him again, like they did oh, yes. in 2016. So it could be Bernie it could be Bloomberg and it could be Buttigieg, right. all vying for the, the nomination come convention time. It'll be very interesting to see how all this plays out. After Super Tuesday, you know, Mike Bloomberg, if he doesn't pull it out in California, a couple of other big states, he's finished. So he doesn't really have a pathway forward. And uh, Buttigieg, I think, has going to, you know, his his appeal is going to be really very limited. Uh, uh, one thing Joe Biden had going for him was a history uh, of respect from the African American community and civil rights community, he's not there capitalizing on that right now in yeah. South Carolina. But uh, you know, I don't know how they're going to put that coalition together. They're, none of these folks has organic appeal to the uh, coalition they need to put together to defeat Donald Trump, which is good news for the country. Yeah, it's good news because we know we need four more years of Donald Trump. Yes. Uh, we've seen the prosperity that he, he's been able to put forward in this country. There's so much more to come. Think about Harmeet if Congress actually worked with him instead of spend all their time trying to impeach him or work against him. Uh, all the more reason we want to win back the House in 2020 as well. Uh, but we see you out there every day fighting the good fight for the president yes. and for this country. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for being with it's us. My today. pleasure. Thank you, Laura. They have no leader, no agenda and no game plan. That's why this party in disarray will fail in their strategy of deception when they face American voters again this November. That's the real news for today. If you'd like to get involved with Team Trump, go to DonaldJTrump.com or text TRUMP to 88022 to join our winning team. I'm Laura Trump from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. Thanks for joining us, everybody.